Hey everyone and welcome back to the Cisco Packet Tracer introduction lab section of this course. We are talking about setting up our layer two environment here within Cisco Packet Tracer. So let's go ahead and continue. Now in this lecture specifically, we need to start configuring our end user devices such as our PC, our laptops, and our server so they can actually communicate together. So for our networking devices to communicate, especially at layer two, there's a few things that are required for any device on that network. The first being it needs an IP address, okay? With that IP address, you're also gonna need an IP subnet mask. And obviously, it's also gonna need what we call the physical address. Now, the physical address is already hard-coded into the actual device we are plugging in our network. Every network interface card, every single port you ever plug in an RJ45 connection into is going to have a physical address, right? That's part of the NIC. And that could also be related to the MAC address, all right? Every single port on a switch will have a MAC address. As you'll see here, if I hover over a switch, uh, let me grab my pointer. And if I hover over the switch, all those ports on the right-hand side have, now these are dummy MAC addresses, by the way, from the packet tracer environment. However, you can see they are actually indeed getting their own physical MAC addresses, okay? That's because those are each different network interface cards for those uh, those ports, essentially. Now, every computer will have its own MAC address. As you can see here on the far right, we have that it has a MAC address, and we can check the server as well, and he's got a MAC address. So that's just something to keep in mind. So really, the only things we need to add to these end-user devices for them to communicate here within, again, this is considered a layer two network, okay? And for any of you that don't know, by the way, I should have mentioned this in the last lecture, is when we're, con when we're talking about layer two networks in general terminology, we're typically concerned with what we call a LAN. That's the type of segment this would be considered or classified as, okay, a local area network. So let's go ahead and start configuring these end user devices. All I'm doing is clicking on the left computer, the 1.5 computer, and we're gonna go over here to the top tab that says desktop, and then I'm gonna click simply the IP configuration tab. Now you notice we could toggle it between DHCP or static, but we do not have a DHCP server running in this lab environment, and nor will we be setting one up in this course. Again, my CCNA, iOS Administration Labs course will walk you through step by step on how to take care of all of that. For this course, however, we can just simply statically add those IP addresses, which means we are physically telling this computer what IP address it's going to use. And that's one reason why I also named them this way. We could also see it up here in the top of the tab is it just helps us when we're configuring things like this a little bit easier to reference. So we're not going back and forth if you have many different devices in here trying to move screens around and figure out what it is. As soon as you open it up, you see it right here in the tab because that's what we, you know, gave, kind of gave it as a visual aid, as a name, all right? Remember, with that name, it didn't add in the IP address. It just told us visually what it would be. So here, all I got to do is hit the tab key. And Packet Tracer is smart enough to know that that is a Class C subnet mask. Okay, this is our 24-bit mask, 255.255.255.0, and we are good. Since we are not trying to communicate to a different broadcast domain, we are not routing whatsoever at layer two in this section of the course, we do not need a default gateway. As well as, since we're not communicating to a DNS server, to a you know maybe some HTTP or things of that nature, we do not need a DNS server either. So just having these two at, right here, the IP address and the subnet mask, we are done. Remembering that our computers always have a MAC address if there's a network interface card built in. So that's good. Let's go ahead and configure the next guy. All right, so we're gonna configure him to be a 192.168.1.6 tab key and hit the X, he's good. We could do this guy down here, desktop. Again, we're going to click the IP configuration tab, 192.168.1.7 oh, tab, 255, 255.255.255.0, sounds good. And if I go to the server over here, again, desktop, you see we have one extra tab, but we're going to go right to the desktop, IP configuration, static is going to be 192.168.1.8, 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 .255 
That's so fun to say it like that. When you say 255 <laughs> you sound like an auctioneer. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm a geeking out over here, ladies and gentlemen. But that is our subnet mask. Notice how I was able to also type it in. So, for example, if we used some subnetting within Packet Tracer with a Class C IP address, but we wanted to use, you know, maybe instead of, so I'm just doing this as an example. Do not follow along. This will not do anything. That's not going to work. If I said a slider notation of 30, oh, see, it won't work. Okay, I can't do it. So 192.168.1.8. But if I wanted to change this maybe to a class 16 or a slider, like a 16-bit mask, I could just manually type it in and it'll work. But Packet Tracer is smart enough to know if it is a classful address to use the default class full mask to that network ID that we are giving it. Okay, just, just a little side note there. So he's done. We could close that out. Awesome. So now what can we do? Well, we could test network connectivity, right? So we could go ahead and take this computer and try to ping our server. In fact, we could try to ping each one of these devices and it should work. So actually, let's first try to ping the 1.6. And just like on your regular computers, you go to a command prompt. Now notice, I am still in the desktop tab on this computer, clicking command prompt, and I'll simply say ping 192.168.1.6, enter. And voila, reply, 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 reply. We have communication to that network, to that uh, computer. Let's go ahead and try pinging the 1.7 computer. So let's go say ping 192.168.1.7. Now, before I you know, continue going through all these, it's always good to do this as you're building your labs to test your network connectivity. Because if you're building complex labs and you, you went through and configured several different devices and many different protocols, and all of a sudden you're not getting network connectivity. Well, now you're at a complete loss for where it failed on you. So if you test your network connectivity as you're moving forward and building your labs within Packet Tracer, and essentially it's kind of the same, the same way in the real industry. As we're building new network designs, we always keep testing as we move forward before we make it live. That way, if something does fail, it's easier to find that root cause and we could fix that issue a lot easier. Opposed to having several different different devices all configured and then, you know, running a whole bunch of different protocols. Now we're, we're going to spend hours upon hours, you know, in some situations actually trying to find where something went wrong. So that's just a little side note. Now also, I'm just going to hit the up arrow. Notice that your keyboard shortcuts within Packet Tracer work just like on your computer. If I hit the up arrow, you see it brought ping back. I can just hit the backspace, type in the number 8, hit enter, and voila. Ladies and gentlemen, we have communication. <laughs> fun stuff, fun stuff. But I want to go back and talk about those broadcast domains a little bit. Let me pull up this notepad. So remember, all ports on Cisco Switch are considered single broadcast domain. Great. Routers are the only devices that separate broadcast domains or essentially subnets. So right now, our network ID for the network we are working on here is all the 192.168.1.0. So 1.0 is, is just the network ID. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, all the way through 1.254. Okay, 1.2 or 255 is reserved. You'll learn that in subnetting. But that's the address range for this network ID. Let's go ahead and change one of these computers to a 2. Dot something. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm just going to click the server and we're just going to change them. You don't need to really follow along with this if you don't want to, but maybe you do. So go ahead. I'm just going to do 2.1. I'm going to change it back here in a second. But now notice that we did indeed communicate to the 1.8 computer. Now notice the name didn't change here, even though the actual address on the server did change, right? But the naming on it didn't, so 1.8. So you could clearly tell 1.8, the server, is exactly what I you know, pinged the last time, and we had full communication. Let's hit the up arrow again. Let's go ahead and type in... Well, we could do 1.8. First of all, it's not going to find it because it no longer exists. Okay, we there is no 1.8 on this local area network as it sits. So I could do a Control C to break that, just like on your computers. What if I hit the up arrow and did a 2.1? Do you think it's going to communicate? Because we did configure this server to be a 2.1 address. Let's hit. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hit Enter. Moment of truth. Bump it a bump it a bump 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 it a bump it a bump 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 it a bump bump. Ooh. Request timed out. Why is that? Because again, 
It's a different subnet, which means it's going to be a different broadcast domain. So for this network, which is the 2.0 network, right up here, let's look it up for here. This 2.0 network to communicate to this 1.0 network, we would need to implement a router. I just wanted to bring that to your attention now. We, in fact, will take a look at that a little bit later where we actually implement a router in this network. All right, guys, so that's how you configure end user devices. Nice and simple, but it gave you a good thorough look into how to physically do it. I will see you guys in the next one.